Today, we're going to be attempting to repair this 486 motherboard, which is actually dead at the moment. Let's get started. This 486 motherboard is a really nice one. It's manufactured by Gigabyte and is the model GA486VM. Now, this is a really early 486 motherboard with VLB, and we can tell this from a couple of things. First of all, the fact that it only uses 30 pin memory, no 72 pin memory, and it also has a DX2 which does not have a socket, it's simply inserted into the board as you can see there. And something really interesting is it actually has a socketed crystal clock too. And you hardly see these on 486 motherboards, especially ones with VLB. So yeah, this must be a very early motherboard, that's for sure. Now when I got this motherboard, it did have one of those pesky batteries on it. But thankfully I was able to remove it and it's done no damage to the board whatsoever. So as you can see on the back, there's no damage. It's completely immaculate, so it's really nice and rare to see this. Now, in its current state, the board actually does not work. I've tried different RAM, different CPU. I've tried everything, and I just can't get it to work. So I've got a PC speaker here, so you can see what I'm talking about. But if we just plug this into the motherboard, then we get... An AT power supply and now we can power it up and I'll let you listen to this error message so the motherboard is just giving out that error and look I've tried researching beep codes and all of that and most of the places said it was bad RAM but I know this RAM is working fine and I've tested it so yeah it can't be bad RAM now somewhere else said that it's a general hardware failure so I'm thinking it's the latter now that's what we're gonna try to figure out there's a whole troubleshooting process which is ideal to go through when repairing such a motherboard and the first thing which is always good to do is to actually just give the motherboard a kind of visual inspection to see what damage there might be. So obviously we have no battery damage on this board which is a big plus. But that is also kind of annoying because it makes it harder to diagnose our issue. Now looking on the back of the motherboard as we can see there's heaps of traces. Now one thing good to do is to always Look at all the traces and try to see if you can see any ones that might be scratched or damaged. Now, in our case, I can see a couple of traces here which look really damaged. I'll, I'll try to point them out, but they're going to be really difficult to see on camera. But we have a little scratch there, and that appears to be connected from the cache modules to the CPU. So we'll have to test that trace, but that could very well be the issue. And we've also got some more scratches over here. Uh, they look pretty light, but they could also be the issue. Um, yeah, that seems to be about all the scratches I can see. Oh, we have some down there too, actually. But yeah, and I can see some bent uh, pins, but that shouldn't be an issue because none of them look like they're touching, so yeah. Now, I think we should start with this cache to CPU trace because that would, in fact, explain the actual um, issue as to why I'm getting that beep code because if the cache isn't working right, it will produce such an error. So, I've got my, I've got my multimeter off to the side here and we're just going to put this into continuity mode. Gonna make sure it's working right, and yep, it's working. So now what we need to do is find either end of where this trace goes and then test it with the multimeter. So here I can see that this trace actually leads up to that pin on the CPU there. So I'll, I'll get that 
ready. And then following the trace over here, I can see it goes to that part of the cache. Now we don't get anything and that is a bit worrying. Now I could have found, I could have selected the wrong pins, but what I want to do is I can actually see what looks like a little break in the trace here. There appears to be some copper exposed. So since it's not working doing it the, from uh, pin to pin, I'll try probing it in the middle here. And would you look at that, right in the middle of our trace where it appears to be broken, we are actually getting a signal. So that tells me right away that this trace is broken as it should be going to that pin and it is not. So right off the bat, we've found a bad trace. This could be the issue. I think we should just temporarily solder a patch wire from the cache modules to the CPU to see if we can get the motherboard to start. Now, the first thing I'm going to do is actually just tin the pin in question so it makes it easier for our wire to join. Now this is our CPU pin, so I'll just heat it up rather simply and then add a bit of solder to it, just like so. We don't need much, just enough. Then over here on our cache pin, I shall just flow it and add a bit of solder. Again, not too much, just a bit extra. All right, so we've got our patch wire now. Actually, I should tin the wire first, so I'm gonna do that. There we go, we've got a nicely tinned wire now. It's always good practice to tin your wires, so yep. And now we can move the board and simply place our wire and solder it directly to this. There we are, just like so, that's a nice connection. And then we can come over here to this one and repeat the process. Just like so. And there's our little temporary patch wire installed. So now I'm going to try out the motherboard again Okay, so right off the bat, that sounds like a better error than we were getting last time. Uh, and that tells us that our fix has definitely made a difference somewhere. Now, 8 beeps generally means a video card error. And this system has probably not been used in 20 years. So I'm willing to bet that the VGA card is just a little... The, VG, the ISA slots are just a little bit dirty. So I'm going to try leaning the card to one side and see if we can get it to work. And just like that, what do you know? We have successfully saved this motherboard, wow. It was as simple as one wire. How cool is that? All right, now this DX2, I don't have a heat sink on it, so I'm just gonna power this thing off really quickly. Um, but that's awesome, we got it going, yes. Now that we can confirm that that one wire was our only error with the motherboard, we need to go back and actually try to make it a bit of a nicer solution because that wire just looks so ugly. So we've got our little dodgy patch wire here and look, it, it does its job but I really think that is so ugly. So I'm going to try something. Alright, so the first thing I'm going to do is uninstall our patch wire because I don't want that thing on there anymore. Uh, so if I just remove it like so. Uh, there we go, our patch wire has been removed. Now, look, there's a couple of ways I could go about this. I could use a really uh, skinny wire, just bridging them. But I really don't want to do that. I mean, look, it's such a big trace and there's only that much damage to it. I kind of just want to repair the actual surface itself. So I'm going to attempt to do that. 
All right, so here's the plan. I'm going to use this exacto knife and I'm going to scrape away the protective layer over that little trace and do a little solder bridge. Look, it's it's a destructive repair, yes, but it's going to look so much better than having a big botch wire that it's just worth it to me. So, yes. Um You've got to be really careful about doing this and unless you're confident like just stick with a patch wire this there's so much room for error with this it's not worth doing if you're not confident so that's just my take on it kind of all right so what i'm going to do here is just slowly scrape away a little bit of either side of the trace just like that we've actually exposed either side of the trace now so there's a couple of things we could do but i'm actually just going to apply a very tiny amount of flux to either side and see if i can bridge it just using solder look i like to be very conservative with flux because it's a pain to clean um I'll just get a bit out here, like so. That should be more than enough. Maybe a little more. Alright, just like so. We don't need more than that. So I'll make sure that I've got a nice clean solder tip. Then I shall just get some solder onto my iron. And try to bridge that. Yeah, that didn't work very well. Yeah, look, it doesn't look like it's going to bridge the gap on its own. And I know this is really difficult to see. Um, please bear with me. So, there's a couple of things we could do. We could either run a very tiny little strand of wire or try to bridge it with solder um, just to make it like a bit more reliable I'm gonna run a strand of wire so that's what I'll do and I'm going to cut a shorter patch wire this time something which will fit it a little better so probably just about there it'll have to be and we can release that onto the board just like so there we are, perfect placement. And then I can grab the iron, put some fresh solder onto it. Hold the patch wire in place. And then solder it. Beautiful, just like that. Now, with any luck, I'll just straighten it out a little. Um, you know what? That's actually perfect. Awesome. Uh, so now I'm going to clean up the flux. And I'll just use some isopropyl alcohol for that. So I've got some Q-tips here. And I'm just going to... Spray them with a little bit of isopropyl alcohol. And we can very carefully just clean our repaired area. And just like so, that should in theory be our repair complete. I'm just going to flatten that down with the tweezers. And you cannot even see it on the camera hardly, but there it is. You know, so it, it looks a lot more elegant than having a huge patch wire between those two pins. You know what I mean? That compared to what you can't even hardly see on the camera now. With our very elegant solution, let's try powering up the board again once more. Hey, what do you know? First try. How awesome is that? 
All right, so it looks pretty good so far. Um, I think we should just insulate our repair now and finish up this board. So I decided that the best way to uh, seal this trace, which I repaired, is going to be to use some epoxy. Now, I've got some here. Mm. So yeah, and I've got this bit of core flute here. And this is going to serve as my mixing station, kind of. Now, the key thing to remember is that a little goes a long way. Alrighty, so I've got some epoxy here. And I'm going to mix a very small amount just to apply onto those traces. So now we just have to mix up the epoxy, like so. All we need to do is grab a very tiny amount and then apply it to our trace. So I've got a very tiny amount here and just apply that and then I'll use some things here just to Move that a bit and take a bit off, a bit of the excess. And just get that nicely on there. So we're covering all of our repair. And there we go. Our epoxy has been applied. It's pretty much entirely repaired, which is awesome. Alright, so it's been about 20 minutes and... Our epoxy has dried up on the back here so that means now that we've basically got a successful repair now I'm just going to give the board a final sort of test uh, just to make sure that it is in fact still working after all of our work that we have performed on it now that I've hooked up the board let's try powering it on for the final time and as we see it comes straight to life how nice is that sweet so our repair was successful all right so i've been trying to get the board to boot into an os for a couple of hours now i think the issue is that it only supports up to two gigabyte hard drives which was kind of common on early 486 boards and as you saw by the ami bios it is like a really early one so yeah, I wouldn't be surprised if it only supports 2 gigabyte hard drives. Now, at the moment, I don't actually have any 2 gigabyte hard drives on hand that are easy to access. Um, so, I think we're going to have to leave this repair just about here. But the motherboard does work, and it works really well um, up until the BIOS. But, but eventually, I'll have to test it out in some DOS and Windows 3.11. But yeah, you know, um, this this repair right here serves a really good example of why it's always good to just check the basic stuff before you start getting logic analyzer probes out and all of that. You know, you just never know what could be wrong with a motherboard, especially ones this old. Um, so it's always good to start with the simple things. And I think this demonstration serves as a really good example of sometimes just how easy what appears to be a dead board can how easy it can be to fix. So yeah, I really hope you guys enjoyed this repair video. Thanks for watching and I'll see you next time.